Oh, someone's left a, their water for the day, their lemon. Look, that's the day's worth of liquid there. Is it? Yeah. Right, I've managed to get up the hill, folks. Now, I reckon there is a way you could just walk round the edge of this wood and get to the Crocombe car park. Well, I don't want to go that way, see? Just catching me breath. I feel so blessed that I've got out here. I feel so blessed. I don't know whether I'll make it out another day. Uh, it, it, you know, now, because it will start getting colder and colder and colder. Now, I don't know which way to go. Shall I go that way? Or that way? Oh, don't know. Um, did I go that way last time? Did I make a mistake and have to go back? I can't remember, so I think I'll go this way. Looks a broader path, doesn't it? I think I started getting caught in ferns when I went one of the ways, and I think I backtracked. Can't remember. It's very likely, though. That's a private wood in there. But I expect deer get in there. So, folks, now with no hat, silly me, but I have got a top. That I can wrap around my head if necessary. It's my, it's my, um, it's just an extra, like, not a t shirt, but something, a very, very light shirt thing I've got. But I, I can use it as a, a shield if necessary. But at the moment, I don't think the sun will be that hot as such. So we're going up, folks going up. Remembering that the Quantocks are, are like medieval, no not medieval, ancient burial places. And they've got lots of carns and mounds in memory of the ancient dead. Right now it's the morning, I got up early, quarter past six to be ready to get out by 10 to 8 to get the train, get the ticket, whatever. So I got up, I always feed the birds in the morning, but not usually too early. Um, <clears throat> I had a lovely cup of tea, a cup of, also a cup of lemon tea. I had a crumpet and a lovely bowl of porridge, treacle porridge, it was beautiful, a bit of glucose. Now it does always give me indigestion when I eat and walk right away. But I knew I needed to top up the glucose levels and initiate the metabolism. I put a little bit of deep heat on my right knee and my right big toe, which for some strange reason it hasn't done it for ages and ages. And I haven't actually done a lot of walks a week, not really big ones, not since middle of August. Because I'm studying with Cambridge University and I've been tied up with doing coursework. But, and I haven't been out, I haven't been out. My big toe, which I often used to play up, like you've got gout or something. Yeah, that really played up the other day. Now, I just treated it on the one occasion with uh, some deep heat and a little bit of Voltro cream. And it just stopped like that. Just stopped. And I can't, I'm not experiencing any of it. Of course, what I don't really want to do is go too far over that way because I'm supposed to be going sort of that way. But what I can remember, I could have gone that way last time, but I'm going to go round this way and pick up the hair naps. You get great views. Now, I was out here a month ago, 
but I would never come out in July. For, I never came out for a couple of months. I came out on the 9th of June and everything was just starting to emerge. The bracken wasn't very high, the heather wasn't out and the gorse not properly. When I came out a month ago, it was out, but it was fading already. Uh, so I missed that lovely purple haze that you get when it's in full bloom, the heather. Um, I did capture a bit of it. So basically, as you can see, the ferns that I've died already, all brown. Aren't they? Look. Right folks, I'm going to turn off until I get right, out the folks. When I get to the, the gate in a minute, I'll be able to remember the name of the corn. Okay, I just can't remember it at the moment. I don't know why I can't, I just can't. This is the corn. Over there, where all those people are, that's the trigger point. And I'll be making my way over that way to go down to meet higher hair nap. But here's a corn. It varies, sometimes it's built up and then it's knocked down again and I've put stones on it before. Um, I think if I'd followed the wood round and not come up this way, I would have actually come out over there. There's a car park over there. I think if I'd followed the wood round, where well, I have seen people doing that, but because I'm not going that way, and I wanted to do, I wanted to do this corn, and I've done it at the right time, because there are people gathering, and people just coming through the gate now that are probably coming here as well. So, Somewhere over there, apparently my sister Jude ashes were scattered, somewhere over Crocombe Car Park, but they've never told me where, so I just have to imagine she's everywhere, my sister Jude. She's everywhere because she loved this place. Right, actually they're not going to bother to come in. I'll tell you the name, I can't remember the name of the... This car, and I'm sorry, but I'll add it. I ought to know, but it's just gone straight out of my head. Look at that, all the view of the hills, look. Right over that hill, over that hill, you head to Bicknoller Post and Bicknoller Coombe, but over that way. Where all the trees are there, down Shepherd's Coombe, Hodger's Coombe, down to Holford. And I'm gonna head across a ridge, going across that way facing Hinkley Point. I'll be doing that in a minute. Can't see that girl anywhere that was ahead of me. So I don't know where she went. She could have gone back down. Every now and again I can hear the steam train folks. The Minehead steam train. I think it sometimes comes along, along this way. To West Bagborough area. I'm sure it does. I heard it just then. A hoot. There's a nice, there is a lovely breeze actually now blowing on me. So I'm going to be making my way along there to pick up um, the hair naps, which are over there. Right, I'm going to turn on. off, folks. I'm really enjoying this walk everyone. I feel so blessed being able to come out here. You know, we have had some funny weather this summer. It's all to do with global warming. Um, this is what you call an Indian summer where it's the 7th of October. I mean, two weeks time it could be absolutely freezing out here, do you know what I mean? Anyway, there's the burial mound there. There's Holford area over there. Hinkley Point in the distance. North Hill and the Trig Point. There's a lot of people gathered there. Sometimes bikers do. 
they meet and then they all whiz around the hills. But like I say all the heather has died down now, no purple haze. Um, but it, it's wild and nice in its own rugged way, I think. I just love this place. I wish I was closer. I mean, this is only the third time I've been out this year. Now, in 2018, I came out a minimum of once a month, but often more. Because I had my vehicle, my Alberta. But uh, I do enjoy coming out, and I, 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 I did a lot of exploring of uh, the Quantox. And um, I really enjoy it. So I like, I'm glad I I know my way around a bit now, you know, because I know how long it takes me to do certain routes, how much time I've got. Um, like I said, if I had a vehicle, I would come out in the winter. But I can't afford to be hanging about for a bus and getting cold. Because to me, getting cold is worse than being hot. For me, it is. I seem to suffer more with the cold, getting cold. Um, but anyway, not to worry. I'm out here now and this buses don't look like they're not going to fail and the trains don't look like they're going to fail today. But it's very, very busy over the car park, look. It is very popular, you know, our beautiful hills. I'm really enjoying it. I just feel so relaxed when I'm out. I mean, I, I have had uh, worries because of a possible break-in. So I've had to have the police around and everything, even forensics. So not going into any detail, but basically it, it really did take my mind a lot. But the coursework I'm doing with Cambridge University, the Archaeological and Anthropology of Death and Burial, it's a really good course and I'm really enjoying it. It's stretching my mind again. You know, it, it's stretching it, really. I'm really having to think. Um, and the next assignment is involving what's called the gaze, which I did touch upon when I was a socio when I did sociology as a student. And even when I did my nursing, we talked about the gaze. I'm not going to go into it now, but that's the next assignment. Um, it's to do with that and uh, all sorts of things tied up with death and burial. Now it looks like I've got to climb over the stile, look. They put a padlock on it. So it looks like I've got to climb over. <laughs> Hello little tree. <sighs> oh, and someone's lost their hat. And someone lost their water earlier. Right, most of the Bikers have gone, but you get different groups of people up there. Someone's lost their hat. They might need it today. At the moment, I don't feel I... I mean, sometimes I get hot with the hat on. <sighs> right, what's this place called? I knew it began with H. I knew it did. Hurley Beacon. How could I have forgotten that? I kept thinking it was H. I just wouldn't come. And there we have all the, uh, one of the few remaining expanses of open moorland in southern Britain, rich in archaeology and wildlife. For thousands of years, people have lived and worked on around these hills. And their actions have influenced the way the landscape looks now. The existence of monuments from prehistory onwards, including the Bronze Age burial mounds, cairns, and Iron Age hill forts. Stand anywhere on the open heath of the Quantucks and you will never be far from a Bronze Age barrow or cairn. There are over a hundred of these monuments on the hills, marking the burial places of people who used the land 4,000 years ago. <sighs> yeah, and some of the beacons were lit for communication, like the arrival of the Spanish Armada, apparently. Um... Anyway, this beacon is a scheduled mon monument and lies within a site of special scientific interest and is protected by law. And there's some of the people up. Right, over and out.